Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another StarCraft Brood War ladder cast. We're jumping into Shiny versus Soma. This is a long series. I won't say how many games are played to keep the mystery alive for you guys. But we've got a pretty big series here between Soma and Shiny, two of the most aggressive players in the scene right now the most one of the most aggressive Terran players I would call him like the Terran zealot he's kind of on that similar level he's incredibly strong on the ladder but he relies heavily on very very aggressive styles of play and looks like he's gonna start his first supply at the front you know what that means you can see the little doodads here this one indicating the position for your barracks and two small spots for the supply depot so that's going to create a full wall in and a ling tight wall in at that so behind a ling tight wall in what's going to be the play well some sort of one 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 potentially a two port wraith build on the other side of the map sending out the first drone Gonna go ahead and take that 12 hatchery. So I'm gonna open a little bit standard here, but unlikely that we'll see full standard play from Soma. That's not really his style. He likes to get aggressive, and so I'm hoping we're gonna see some longer games out of these two. But it is fully possible that we'll just have incredibly quick games back to back to back to back to back to back to back. We'll see how it goes. I just wanted to mention guys that I joined the CPL recently I've been in the group for a while but I haven't participated much I decided to make that uh, change now I've been playing in the preseason and although I have been streaming much I have been practicing a bit and I've been stretching my back quite a bit lately feeling a lot better not nearly as much pain, actually no pain right now as I sit here. And so we'll be getting back to streaming this week. We'll be practicing up for the CPL, trying out some builds. I'll leave you guys a link for those of you who are interested in the CPL. By the way, it is a league called the Coach Player League where a bunch of noobs get together and they just help each other practice. And you get some great games. You get to uh, learn without just struggling on the ladder against really, really strong opponents. Two Port Wraith is going to be the build of choice from Shiny. And Shiny, I mean, he's not building any Marines at this front. He sees the wall. Soma sees the wall. He should know. What kind of build this is he's built a very fast layer in this game he's gonna immediately throw down the creep colony i think that's a prudent maneuver just make sure you've got that down as soon as possible and honestly i'd like to see burrow here as well because no matter what your opponent's doing with a one base uh you know factory teched out build as Terran, whether it be a run by a drop uh, or just two port wraith or just a one 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 having that burrow is so valuable and it will be on the way so soma agrees with me he's gonna go ahead and grab that burrow let's see what kind of work he can do with this two lings on the ramp ready to fight in case of a vulture run by but it seems like he's just gonna go behind the mineral patches here we go shiny getting in back Behind these mineral patches, one drone, two drones go down, a third falls. Gonna get one more before this goes down. Four, five! Oh man, he gets two. Right as that was about to go down, five drones total is brutal damage to his Zerg player who is on an incredibly low uh, economy. We're gonna have these wraiths begin the harassment now with the spire not quite complete. The burrow is going to be very important. 
already going to be losing an overlord some of them just hidden out on the map but this one back at home is not going to be so lucky and another one in the natural could end up going down and likely will fall there it is it goes down starting to go to work on this drone bro Ooh, very nicely done there that was super close Third drone gonna have to burrow here as well. Finally, the mutas are gonna pop out. Six mutas come out, but oh, damn. He unburrowed a little bit too early there. Too eager to get back to work. That drone, he wanted to catch the worm, but instead he caught those hands. The Wraith coming back in for one last punch at that mineral line. Gets another drone, and that is brutal. The Wraith over here at the top center. Picking off an Overlord as well is going to hurt. And so, a lot of damage has been done to Soma thus far. What is going to be his follow-up? Armor and Pneumatized Carapace. The Overlord speed on the way. So, he's going to mass Muta. And try to just fight these wraiths. Now, I'm a little bit surprised to see that we don't have an add-on for this starport. Because what is he going to do with this many wraiths and no cloak? Well, he's actually going to be lifting off, setting up a control tower. But that's not for cloak. This is a transition into Valkyrie. We're going to see Valkyrie play straight up airbase Terran. Coming here from Shiny. He is not going to be building ground units. He's just going to be getting out Valkyries and fighting this army. Now, I don't think this will do too well against the Carapace that Soma went for. We're going to have to have a lot of Valkyries to take these Mutas on. They're going to be really nice and healthy. And with Carapace, they're going to stay that way. Dealing any damage to those mutas is going to be difficult. Of course, the wraiths can get the job done, but they don't have cloak. And the mutas are just going to be splashing down way more damage than the wraiths can keep up with. It's hard enough to control wraiths. But you add Valkyries into the mix as well. Oh, he's got two SCVs stuck here. Put those both on one patch and hop one over. I think that would be a good idea. Controlling both Wraiths and Valkyries at the same time, both of them are difficult. And together combined, I think they're nearly impossible to do at the same time. He stopped Wraith production, or he stopped uh, Valkyrie production. Okay, he's going to go ahead and start one more Valkyrie. He's got two Valkyries. And what do we have? Seven Wraiths. Can he fight back? This attack from Soma. Soma has nine mutas and a lot of scourge with more units coming forward here. His overlord speed unnecessary in this game, but you just don't really expect to see cloakless wraiths this many. We we'll keep running away from this army. A lot of these uh, scourge are going to connect. Diving right on top of this. Both of the Valkyries get picked off. Another Valkyrie should have popped out by now. Maybe it did and got killed immediately. Not very many Wraiths left over. Not very many Mutas either. That was some craziness going on over top of those turrets. Just diving straight in as the plus one finish. He's going to dive on these last few Wraiths. And as that last one falls, I think the hopes here for Shiny are going down the tubes. That was a crazy amount of action in a very short period of time, but you can just see how hard it was for Shiny to control both of those uh, separate units. They're very different to Micro. They have completely different requirements, and they both require a lot of attention and care. So he was kind of pulling back the Valkyries, trying to make them shoot and run, but at the same time trying... To, uh, there, see, he can, he can uh, control the Valkyries, right? But controlling both at the same time, both the Valkyries and the Wraiths, seems to be too much for him. These two Valkyries come out here. They're trying to push away these Mutalists from that command center, but it's been canceled. Not going to be able to make that work. He's making a transition now into Barracks. 
try and pump out some marines but soma's in full control right now with a third base up and running he's got the gas over there and he's just pumping out mutilus non-stop he's also transitioning into lurker by the way oh the final valkyrie goes down and that's the last nail in the coffin shiny taps out it was an interesting air only play from him you don't often see like i said seven eight you know double two port wraith with no cloak but i can see what he was trying to do maybe just waiting for an extra pair of valkyries rather than going for the command center as quickly just wait a little bit get the finish up the turret and get two more valkyries and then set down the command center maybe he could have held this attack it was very close uh, as the attack was going on very close to a hold but he just wasn't quite able to stop the mutas from running over his air force maybe a few more turrets maybe a few more defenses i guess he wasn't quite aware of how aggressive soma was planning to be but you gotta kind of expect it from a player like soma this is the way he likes to play and so if you're going to give him a game like this, a scrappy, crazy game like this, he's going to be at your throat the entire time. Putting the pressure onto your opponent sometimes is the best defense. Guys, let's jump into game number two and see what kind of fireworks we're in for. These guys are going at each other. Two of the most aggressive players in the world. Let's jump right into it. Kind of a wild build out of shiny in that last game you can see he's working with some different ideas this guy one of the highest on the ladder i think he's like ranked two or three right now on the ladder really really impressive ladder terran but not able to compete in africa tv events i believe that's what i've heard although not confirmed this guy apparently unable to compete in SSL or ACS or anything like that that would be a shame I'm not sure exactly the reason maybe I'll uh do some research after this game he's been putting out some really decent fights and so might be worth it to look him up and dig into his backstory a little bit more if we're going to continue to cast more games of this guy Soma still in the military right now. Probably doing a desk job uh, during the day and then coming home to ladder at night. He can't really compete in anything, but he is still staying sharp as a knife when it comes to his Zerg play. Maybe taking it a little less seriously at the moment, maybe uh, being a little more relaxed in how he approaches the game in practice but he is not letting that rust build up at all he is right back into it before he's even able to compete in any tournaments and so he's looking quite sharp at the moment going for another 12 hatch and it'll be a one ranks fe here from shiny so we're gonna get to see standard openers i would put soma in a lead usually soma if shiny doesn't have a leg up over him i would put his chances of taking down soma pretty low shiny is not quite the same caliber as a player like Soma, but maybe he can pull some trickery here to grab an edge in this game. It looked like he was thinking of placing a bunker in behind the mineral line, but he decides against it. Still sending some Marines across the map, but I think he's going to completely turn around now. He's forced three sets of Lings. And with the three sets of lings, you can defend pretty much all this stuff that's coming across the map right now. Only four marines total. Six lings beats that easily. 
unless you have some godlike control and blocking with the SCV. But I don't think that that's what we're going to see out of Shiny. Also, Soma's early game link control is incredibly good, so he should be able to fight this back. SCV's going to try to slip in. It's spotted by those lings. Just going to leave one over here to chase. And the rest going to camp out here in the middle. We're about to have speed. And actually, these Marines need to go home. These Marines really need to go home right now. Because in a moment with speed finishing, Lings are going to be able to take a much better trade. Even just six Lings could pretty easily beat these six Marines. It is... Kind of uh, expected, but it's a little bit overwhelming the difference between slow links and speed links. How much damage they can do really depends on how quickly they can close that gap, as is the case with pretty much every melee unit in a melee versus ranged matchup. Shiny does manage to make his way back to the natural, which is quite quite a big deal he's gonna move out with just one medic second medic should be coming out soon getting his engineering bay here on curve but not gonna have the early plus one build not gonna have a lot of marines here either he's just gonna be trying to f come out and force potentially a sunken colony but i'm not sure he can even do that he tried to put on the pressure here early, but I think this is largely failed. This is a very fast academy rush with a two racks. And he can't even go over here and push Soma into making a single sunken colony. So Soma, you know, he's forced to build a few extra links, but not a lot. Definitely not a lot. He's only got eight lings total and he's kept them all alive. And now he's going to be able to pump out a lot of mutas. Getting armor while taking bottom right. Flying in now with these mutas. Managing to get just one SC so SCV so far. But the muta number is slowly starting to build. Drones are being produced as well. He's... Focusing this economy while checking the edges of shiny space for any resistance or for any holes that he could potentially dive into. Seven mutas are available now, so the potential for a dive is there, but with armor on the way and not a lot of mutalists in production, I don't think we're going to be diving in too, too deep as Soma. He's going to dive on this bunker at the very least. Pick that off. Get a few marines for his trouble. And open up the position to where maybe he can pick off these supply depots. And potentially when he swings pressure back into the main, he can bring some lings in to deal a little extra damage. Pick off a supply depot or maybe come in and kill a missile turret or something like that. Maybe a couple of marines can get caught by the lings flooding into the front. Still fighting here with the mutas, as you do usually with the carapace upgrade. The carapace comes online. You're going to be wanting to fight these marines more and more. He has a hydroden and queen's nest on the way. And so I think this is for a normal transition rather than some sort of guardian play, which sometimes armor upgrade can telegraph guardian play, but not always. Usually when you go Guardian play, you're going to drop the Queen's Nest when your Carapace is halfway done. That way, by the time Carapace is done, your Hive is just finishing up. And you're going to be able to immediately start your Greater Spire to hit that very important timing before 10 minutes flying in and doing a bunch of damage with the guardians before there's really a big transition on the way single valkyrie out 
Gonna push things back a little bit. But the mutas are still pretty high health. Only five damage on each of these uh, due to the carapace being done. The Valkyrie is really not going to do as much as it regularly would in these fights. Similar to what we saw last game. Just kind of poking, kind of tickling these mutas as they fly in. Snipe down a few more marines. The full transition is on the way here. I love the... Uh, Queen's Nest out in the front. I love the double sunken. Place your lurkers right in the middle there. It becomes incredibly difficult to break this position. We're going to see Shiny come across the map with that Valkyrie play. Try to push the issue before lurkers are available, but... Oh gosh, wait a second. Well, this is kind of bad. Oh, he gets the Valkyrie there. And he opened up some supply as well. You can see he was stuck at 76 supply for a little while, and that is one way to just instantly lose your game, by the way. If you get stuck on supply right as you're supposed to be making lurkers, and the Valkyrie push is coming, you can just straight up die. It is incredibly embarrassing. Uh, the Terran player has no idea that uh, of what exactly happened. They just know that whatever they did worked, and they think they're very, very... Uh, or they feel very impressed with themselves and their ability to break open a, a Zerg player, but you will know the truth. The truth is you just didn't have any supply open. You miss one Overlord and thus you die. Mutas are going to come in and trade a little bit more here. Doing a great job against these plus one uh, attack Marines. Some vultures are coming out. Well, that's interesting. Sniping two of them already, though, is kind of huge. And he gets a Valkyrie once again. The lurkers are out in the front. Just going to kill that Val or that vulture for free. He starts vehicle weapons. He's going to be tra transitioning into pure mech. Pure mech play. But I don't think he has the, the weight of army on the map to make this transition cleanly. He needs to have a ton of Marines. Like what you generally want is a ton of Marines here, a bunch of Marines here, and then two bases on the way behind this while transitioning into mech. He just doesn't have any of that. Gonna get surrounded by these lurkers. The Ling's gonna come up from behind as well, diving on top of the Marines. Vultures are laying out mines in the front, but what good are these mines going to do? Oh, 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 I'm slowing things down. I'm actually just resting my hand on the keyboard here. I apologize for that, guys. I believe we are now in full motion. Are we at, are we at full speed now? I think not quite. There we go. There's full speed. I do apologize, my friends. We've got some vultures going to run by into this mineral line, and they could actually deal quite a bit of damage. Well, meanwhile, the uh, Lurkers can't actually push forward, and he's going to wrap around, kill a few more drones. This is some good harassment on the side of Shiny, but I just, I don't see this as being enough. Eventually, Soma's just going to remake some drones. He's going to get his army to the front. And a Defiler is going to get over here. To start laying down these dark swarms in just a moment. He went for Overlord Speed finally. He sees how screwed he is and Shiny just going to tap out. An ill-conceived mech switch is how I'll label this game. Shiny had a hard time battling with the Mutilus Control of Soma. And you can kind of see why he's more of a cheesy player. He likes to throw out a lot of crazy, wacky builds. He has some great micro with uh, some of these units, like Wraith Control, pretty darn good. Valkyrie Control, when he's not controlling Wraiths at the same time, pretty decent as well. But his Marine Medic walking around the map left something to be desired. It wasn't very effective. It wasn't good at defending the Valkyries. And it was pretty easily picked apart by Soma. 
So I think we're going to have to see some more aggression or some different styles coming out of Shiny in this next game. If he wants to be able to take a win, let's jump into the next one. See if he can make it happen. All right, game three. Shiny getting dominated by this man, our hero, Soma, in the bottom left-hand corner. Can't wait for him to come back. Nice to see him. Still kicking it on the ladder. Getting lots of good games against top ranked players and he's actually going to open with a pool in this game, which is a little bit surprising. Maybe he's uh, thinking that Shiny will want to eight racks him or BBS him in the middle of the map now that he's lost a couple of games. I think it's a fair assumption. I'm going to go right into the gas here. So what was this like a 12 pool or 11 pool right into gas? I'm going to grab his natural. Doesn't have a lot of larva to build lings right now. So if there was an eight racks or a BBS, he might still be in a lot of trouble, honestly. So maybe this is not the, the goal of the build. You don't have a drone you don't have enough money to send a drone out with this build so he, he can't really know whether there's pressure coming or not he's gonna spot the hatchery now shiny is gonna find this he's gonna see the lings coming and so he'll know that it was a pool first layer on the way this is a very fast layer by the way about a two minute 30 layer he's gonna have really fast mutas out and that's going to be hard to deal with. If there was some sort of two port wraith or one, one, one coming out of shiny, I think it would be pretty tough for him. Pretty tough indeed to hold on. I don't know what all those SCVs were doing. Maybe they were pulled to the front to try and hold in case there was a bunch of lings coming. I think that's uh, that's a possibility. He might've thought that there was going to be uh, lings at his doorstep any second. You know, when he came up that high ground and saw two links popping, maybe there was links already coming through the middle of the map. But that wasn't the case. He sends the SCVs back. I'm going to go ahead and grab his gas. One racks fast expand is actually a great build against what we have here for Soma. Now, if he loses these Marines, he's going to throw away a lot of the advantage that he has from this build. If he just goes back home, sits tight in the natural, builds enough turrets and holds the Mutalisk attack, all of the sacrifice of economy that Soma's done so far to get such an early uh, spire out, to get such an early layer down, is probably going to go by the wayside. So that's what I want to see out of Shiny. He's just good, solid defensive play. Not his forte, but maybe he can pull it off. We are cross map position, so it's a very long rush distance for these mutalists to get across. And there's so few drones. Look at how few drones we have here as the Zerg player. He's just barely going to have three drones on minerals. And it's two hatch muta all in, most likely. Gonna be very difficult for him to transition out of this place. Oh wow, eight lings at the front. Gonna be checking, seeing where the mutas are at. Some mutas are gonna be popping out here in just a moment. Coming across this map, you can see quite a bit sooner than uh, regular two hatch play or even 2.5 hatch play. Usually you'll see them coming out about six minutes. But we're going to be at the base by six minutes with about four or five mutas. Would have been much faster had this not been cross map, but someone's going to have to work with what he's got. What he's got is very little, so he can't be losing any lings right now. He's going to have to make these worth a lot in this game. Flying in now, it's still pre-six minutes. 
And we've already got five mutas to the front. That's enough to one-shot Marines. And dive here on top of this supply depot, picking off the Marines so that the uh, Lings can do their work. Range is not done yet, so it's a little bit hard for these Marines to save that supply depot, and the supply indeed goes down. Bit of a shock that we don't have a bunker here in the natural. I guess there hasn't been a scan for a little bit to see how many drones have been produced. If you saw the the low number of drones that Selma has, he might actually want to throw down that bunker. Still killing off these Marines, just diving on top here. Five Mutilists remain. He can still one shot and he is going to take over this natural. I think this might be it, guys. Shiny just not able to hold on. Some excellent, excellent, excellent micro from Soma and just pure rallies coming across the map and diving on top of all of these turrets. As they're being laid down, they're going to get shut down. No Marines being produced here in the natural. Shiny is a little bit tilted. He's going to get this around on the turret. Can he actually get the turret? The turret dies. But quite a bit of damage went down onto these mutas. It's not enough, though. These SCVs are going to continue to go down. And with the mutas on top of the barracks, there's nothing that Shiny can do but leave this game genuinely a rough game here for Shiny. He's still trying to come out here to just build one of these turrets. He's having, he's having such a hard time getting one of these finished. It's like he finally will finish one turret. He cancels the other, but so many SCVs have been killed. We're actually behind on SCVs at this point. 15 to 21. This game is all but concluded. We're going to have Soma continue to push in here. He's just about to finish his carapace. And that'll make it even easier for him to complete this mission. Diving in on top of these Marines one last time. Going to work on the medics. Pushing everything back and picking off the few remaining SCVs in this game. GG is finally called. Shiny taps out. Soma once again victorious. Okay, here we go. Shiny in the top right. Soma in the bottom right been putting that hurt onto shiny so far and i don't know how shiny's confidence is feeling right now i think my confidence would be shaken pretty heavily after losing this many games in a row he is on a barcode so maybe he's not aware that this is soma but he knows this is a strong zerg player a scary strong opponent that cannot be taken lightly it seems like he doesn't want to go for a crazy rush though and so we're going to see another wall in from Shiny. What will Soma pull out this game? Is it going to be the same build as last time? I want to really carefully look into this build. If this is what he's going to do. 11 pool or 12 pool, maybe? Yeah, there it is. No, he's going for the 12 hatchery. Okay. 12 hatchery this time. I might actually try that build that we saw in the last game. Uh, out on stream. On Tuesday, I'm going to be streaming, fasting, and practicing some builds. Maybe I'll practice that build. Three drones at the natural make only mutas and just try to kill I think it was 12 pool straight into gas 2 minute 30 layer very very crisp build from Soma a build that we would have seen from him a lot like 2 to 3 years ago when this guy was all about the 2 base muta all in the 2 hatch muta all in he was so good with it he would do it almost every single game. Nice to see him still pull it out here and there. It's so scary. When done correctly. A player like Light wouldn't have made the same mistakes as Shiny there though. You don't want to throw away all your Marines right away. And you just make so many uh, Marines turrets. You make a bunker in the front. 
you just do not stop you do not stop making turrets that is a hundred percent what needs to be done he's going after this scv oh he gets so close 10 hp on that creep colony gets start started here at the natural lings are going to come to the front he cancels oh boy the cancel there is bold there are two marines in this bunker there's only a little bit of hp on that scv so maybe it's fine he's gonna run by Ooh, uh oh he doesn't catch the marine that's coming in that is bad and he might let it in okay he does pick that off but he's gonna lose almost every ling for just that one marine i'm not sure that's worth it oh the ling is on hold position as well it's not gonna deal any damage there try to dive on this marine can he get it before it gets in the bunker no it does make it into the bunker and now it's just one ling again on hold position gets killed this is getting out of control for soma he should be able to handle this this shouldn't be a problem but he canceled his sunken colony because he thought he was going to be fine he's waiting for the ling speed to finish maybe with ling speed being done and no scv a few more links are going to pop out. He should be able to surround this and kill it. Will the hatchery go down? Just 300 HP left on that. He's going to pull the trigger here at the last possible second. Just targeting down the hatchery, though, might be the right call. Hiding behind the mineral patches here. All the Marines are going to go down. I think he's managed it. Going to hold on to that hatchery. One Ling here, not part of that battle, but it's fine. Taps out. What? Okay. Soma just gives up? Well, that's crazy. Did he lose an overlord or something during this? What did he see that caused him to tap out? He was, of course, not handling that well. The situation was kind of dire. You can see the Marines here in the wall. He's got more Lings on the way. And so he was going to have to counterattack. Maybe his spire didn't start. Maybe that's the reason. I mean, I don't see a spire. He starts the spire right before tapping out of this game. I think that's what it was. That his spire never... He never built the spire. That's a pretty rough loss. So Soma actually goes out here in the end. A little bit anticlimactic. But you can see that even the top tier players make mistakes like this sometimes. When it's all on the line. Soma usually can perform, but here on the ladder, casually trying to hold off this marine aggression, which should be not a big problem. Shouldn't be a big deal uh, to stop. Yeah, he's got money for it. He just hasn't built that spire yet. He's, just, he's got money. Let's see. He's just not building. He's not building it. He's still not building it. He's just building lings. This did not go well. I think he's a little bit frustrated with himself for not allowing that uh, original sunken colony to finish. And also for missing the marine that was coming up. See, he runs by. He goes after the SCV. In all truthfulness, he only needs to send one ling to kill that. It only has one hit left on it. And he needs to catch this next Marine. But he sends the Lings out as the Marine slips past. It's so brutal. He does get the kill on this, but at what cost? Losing basically every Ling. So frustrating to deal with. These type of bunker plays. It's honestly my least favorite thing about TVZ. It's so frustrating. Uh, the number of players who are going to bunker rush you on the ladder and the difficulty of holding it and the number of different types of bunker rushes there are out there is really mind-boggling it's hard to be ready for all of them soma gets beaten by a bunker rush and not only beaten but mentally beaten here in that he just leaves this game before even being completely out of it you can see right here at the end 13 drones remain but 13 to 21. Even though he killed all of these Marines. Coming across the map, he probably wasn't going to get any damage with those Lings. He was going to have a hard time. His Spire was so far behind. So heavily delayed. He decides to call it. 
a pretty good series overall but this last game a bit of a dud unfortunately guys i apologize we'll leave it at that thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one